would like everybody to do one thing for me. One favor. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes, whatever. Take a deep breath through your nose, as deep as you can get it. Make your lungs and your stomach swell. There's another meditation class. This is getting oxygen to your brain. And I have seven and a half percent loss of brain energy because I'm wearing a tie. And I have to do this for myself. So I'm not sort of drifting. So take a deep breath through your nose, swell your lungs, your chest, your stomach, everything, as deep as you can. And hold it. Hold it as long as you can. Now, without breathing out, I want you to take another breath in. Not breathing out? Through your nose, without breathing out. You get the bigger swelling of the stomach and the lungs. Okay, and now after you're done with that, take a deep breath out through your mouth and blow it down. Okay, I need to exhaust again. Now that's the whole thing is to get some oxygen to your brain so you don't fall asleep in this boring lecture. So before we get started, even though we got started, she was going to fall asleep again. Okay, before anything else, I would like us all to give Peggy a greeting for allowing, uh, to, allowing us to use her space here and dedicating an hour of our employees' time to stay here and watch. Thank you, no, Peggy. Thank you. Now, let's get me out of the way. My name is Tony DeAngelis, in case you haven't read it. I think it's on this. I don't have my last name. My name is Tony DeAngelis. And let me ask you something before we get started. Who's here? What are we here for? What are you here? Why are you here tonight? I have my camera. I can see you. What's that? Oh, help. Actually, the question, the answer I'm looking for is we're here to learn something. Now, let me tell you something. If you don't learn something, you're not listening. But if you're not asking me questions, I'm not learning anything, and that's bad. But I'll, let me give you a, bit, a little bit of my history and just do the math. And you'll see that I'm probably lying. But basically, I was born in 1937. That makes me 81 years old. Harry is a little older than me, and he plays tennis a lot worse than I do, I think. <laughs> but uh, I'm 81 years old. I went to school, got gradu graduated by college by the time I was 20, and I immediately went into engineering. I was an engineer for 35 years. And I'm in nutrition for 40 years. So 40 plus 35 plus 20, that would make me 95. So I'm lying somewhere, I don't know. And actually, the problem is there was a lapse. There was an overlap there because I was a sick puppy from the time I was born. We lived on nothing but white bread. Actually, bread was better then. And cold cuts, a lot of that stuff. So then spaghetti and meatballs. Not too many vegetables. Salad was for holidays. but. I had a bad diet, and uh, I was pretty pretty sick by the time I was in my 30s, so I had to start look at, looking at nutrition, and I had friends in the family with medical doctors, and I realized they don't know a lot, because they're, they're, they're scratching their head an awful lot, they couldn't figure out what's wrong. But so I got into that, got that started. But I don't know what you know, and but uh, I have to just give you some basic learning so you'll understand a little bit about the direction that I had with my treatments, okay? What is the number one thing? That is an easy clue that we all need. Water. More than anything okay. else. Water, that's Air. close. Air. Air. Air, yeah, oxygen. Air. Okay, so oxygen. Here's oxygen. Here's oxygen. <coughs> we need oxygen. What happens when you take oxygen with a gas and you measure it and mix it with another gas and it becomes become liquid? H and O, H2O becomes water. Okay, what happens when you add carbon to it? I know that's a dirty word for some people, but we all need it. When you add carbon to this, you also get another solid, a whole family of solid, sol uh, solids called carbohydrate. Carbon with water, carbon hydrated. 
okay, CHO, CHO. So carbohydrates take up at least 75% of the food chain. Now we add another, nitrogen. What do you put, the number one thing you put on your lawn is nitrogen, so the grass grows, is that right? Okay, so nitrogen, you have four different gases making what it is, the protein that we need to supply. Now there are, somewhere between, it depends on what you read, who's counting, somewhere between 12 and seven, essential amino acids, that means you have to get them out of your diet. You have to eat them somewhere, from vegetable or animal sources. So you need to have, but there is one essential amino acid that you have to have another mineral attached to it. And that mineral is selenium, okay? Selenium, how important is that? Well, it's pretty important. If you're not getting enough selenium, you cannot get the essential amino acid. Your muscle waste, everything goes down the hill. Now, you can't miss getting some selenium because it's in most of your vegetables. Okay, so, but it turns out most people are deficient in selenium. So, we know about China, right? Does China really care about how their population feels? No. They care about them showing up for work and working for a nickel an hour or whatever it is they get. So, what have they done in some provinces of China? They have added, like we we tried to add, we tried to add uh, fluoride to the water. Total insanity. Nobody in any other country, I don't think, will do that. But what China has done, they they realize the essentiality of selenium. They actually put it in the water. So the good news is you can get selenium very cheaply uh, and. You don't need a lot, 200 micrograms a day, micrograms a day, very small capsules. That's something you have to have. Do you have to have that as a supplement? Absolutely not. What you have to do if you want to guarantee that you get enough selenium is eat six Brazil nuts a day. Okay? Uh, you don't want to do six Brazil nuts a day and it. Okay, let me, uh, let me make a break. Uh, I guess you just wanted a pencil, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Before you leave tonight, the most important thing, I have no handouts. Why? Because I don't know how many people are going to be here. I don't know what you know. I don't know what your interests are. Whatever you, you can stop me anytime you want, ask a question. I don't have any planned agenda. So you can stop at any time. Yes, you have a question. So how did one <coughs> gauge whether one had enough selenium inside? How do you the, gauge it? Yeah. How no? How would one measure it? How would we know if we were getting enough <coughs> selenium? Uh, there's only one way that that's convenient. That would be a hair analysis. I you do a hair that. analysis. I have booklets oh, here. Oh, hair analysis. Want to do hair okay. Analysis. Thank you. Let, let me let me let me tell you one thing here. The important thing here is that I'm not going to, you're not going to have questions here, or you'll be embarrassed to ask a question, you're too, too timid to ask a question, or you don't have the question right now, you're going to get, you're going to have that question on your way home in the car. You have access to my, my database that I have. I have a database that's over a thousand subjects on things that I've written, I boil down things into a couple of pages, and I give you some addendums to it. So there's almost no subject you can ask me about that I can't give you a paper. All you have to do, you, you take my email address, write one word, diabetes, and I'll send you all that I have on diabetes. Osteoporosis, and I'll send you what I have on osteoporosis. You don't have to go to Google. You don't have to go to those places. Because when you go to those places, all you're going to get is a, a, a filtered out version of what they want you to buy, not what's healthy. Okay, so I don't, I don't pay any attention to any of that stuff, that medical, uh, pharmaceutical uh, element that gets introduced in everything that they do. And then, you know, when you go to Google, the first, the first uh, page of stuff is all publicity more than anything else. So you get a card, you send me an email, I will give you a question. You, you don't have to write a long thing about symptoms or anything else because I won't have time to answer it for everybody but I could easily click on something and send it right to you. So you have access to my database, answer almost every question you have is there. I don't 
answer questions about medical questions necessarily, but we're going to get to blood tonight. That's the important thing. Now, the second most important thing I want to talk about, it starts with my favorite person in the whole world. Uh, well, uh, maybe not my favorite favorite, but famous, my favorite scientist in the whole world is Linus Pauling. Does anybody know Linus Pauling? Vitamin C. Okay, what is he for? What do they know to do? Vitamin C? No, it's not vitamin C. No. That, that's <laughs> after, he, after he was, after he won two Nobel Prizes. Mm -hmm. Linus Pauling, let, let me explain. We have proteins. Proteins are essentially are amino acids, and amino acids, and amino acids, and amino acids, <coughs> all connected by this linkage, okay? So we have these amino acids all connected by this linkage. Now Linus Pauling, before he was 40, discovered what, how this happens. How do we get amino acids and glue them together and make proteins? Okay, so a lot of amino acids hooked together makes a protein. The normal one most important food that you're gonna get. Now, first of all, first, first. Protein means first in, first most important food you're going to eat is fruit. I don't care if it's vegetable or meat, protein is the most important. Because you can't make anything out of, out of amino acids except water. It doesn't go up, you have to put water. So you take the protein with water and you got to make it. But Linus Pauling figured out this, how to do this. A very complicated thing to learn, to figure out. He figured it out. He got, a, he got a Nobel Prize for that. Every single biochemistry book had to be scrapped because it was me missing the essential chapter of what do you do with all this, all of this science? How do you hook it together? So he came out with that. And then the other reason he's my hero is he stopped the nuclear testing on U.S. soil. He used all of his money to stop nuclear testing. He actually saved flat out two million lives right then and there. He doesn't get credit for that. But the government discredits him for that. And he said, heck with you, I don't need your damn grants. I'm gonna just work on with my buddies alone. So he got into the vitamin C. And the second most important thing you have to do is assure that you get enough vitamin C. Now you can get enough selenium from your diet. But I don't believe there's anybody in the United States or even on this planet, with all the things that are going on chemically in the air, in the soil, in the water, all of that's going on, you are never going to get enough vitamin C from your food. Sorry. You have to take a supplement. Now, what do I do? Here, I have something here. This is the way I do it. I use vitamin C crystals or flavored vitamin C. You put it in your water. I use a 1,000 milligrams or more. On the other day, but I put a thousand milligrams in my water. I make a jug of water and I drink a little at a time. Every chance I, every time I remember it. Because the important thing about vitamin C is that vitamin C is in and out in about four hours. And this is the problem with any water soluble thing, it washes out. It does some good, and the good doesn't linger necessarily until you take the next dose. See, so the important thing with vitamin C is continuous influx of vitamin C, right? Then, at night, let me show you a couple of things. 